this was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So, for instance, if you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here. The pump block. And then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here, and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here. Before, the idea is to have a diameter relatively smaller than this one right here and this right here. So normally, if you're using just the battery tube to measure, you probably have D1 and D2 the same because you are operate, operating in a pipe. You just make this little throat in order to calculate the difference on velocities here and the difference on pressures. So as you can see, there's a difference on height, and you know that the difference on height, when we talk about different fluids, is rho g h. This will give us the change of pressure, and once you have the change of pressure, we're going to be able to calculate velocity with the mechanical energy equation. So, we have the equation right here. As you can see, let's do a balance. This is letter B. This is letter A. Uh, there's no change on height, or at least not that strong. We have no pump. We have no we're going out, the change of velocity of course there is, and there is a friction factor but instead of calculating the friction we're going to let's say ignore it for now and add it later mm -hmm. velocities can be related with the continuity equation and normally we will be able to read the pressure drop so once we read the pressure drop we can calculate the volumes Mm -hmm. Okay, so recall that we can relate, oops, this is, this is A, velocity on A equals the diameter ratio to the square times the actual velocity in the throat, so the velocity in the throat, and you remember our equation got here, we got pressure differences and we got two velocities. So you want to know the velocity, you will have to substitute in here, this is right here, and right here is just, when you try to solve for velocity on B, you're going to have this one right here. And now, remember that we ignore the friction loss, well, we're going to correct that with this CV value. Okay, so we have this velocity right here, actually, well, wait for it. Just be sure that this is a velocity. This is my pressure drop, delta P divided by rho. And this number 2 comes from the famous number 2 here. So just once again, we have the delta pressure right here. We have the square root here. We have the velocity, which we are going to use this right here. And, well, we have essentially everything. That's why we have the velocity on the throat. Just a little note on the CV value, it's about 0.98 to 0.99. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need... You can see from this equation right now, you can learn it by heart. I don't recommend it, but you can learn it by heart or have it in your formulary. Just be sure that this applies only to this system. We need... Mm, diameter 1 and the diameter of the truth actually this, no, actually we need the diameter here drop of pressure, we need to calculate it probably if you are in, in an industry you will have directly a manometric barometer here mm, you need to know the density of the fluid inside the pipe so that's very important when we talk about this density this density is about this fluid, not this fluid right here. This will be probably mercury, and this will be probably, I don't know, maybe water or something like that. 
So once we calculate this, the change in pressure is given with this height. This density is a constant. And the diameter ratio, well, you should know it. You created the pipe, so you know the pipe here and the throat here. You will be able to calculate the velocity in the throat. Once you get the velocity in the throat, you can calculate the area on the throat times the velocity of the throat, and you get the volumetric flow rate. And if you know density, which we know, you can calculate the mass flow. Common advantages of the Venturi tube is of cheap operation, very easy to install, many times you can literally just buy it, and the energy loss due to friction is relatively low because this is very smooth, even though of course you will have something, it's not so high. The advantage is it's kind of expensive to install, even though it's easy, it's expensive. And it makes sense because if you have a normal pipes, you will need to cut the pipes and then add these two and so on. And once installed, it's kind of hard to uninstall. So, for example, this will be fixed. You have this already weld and your piping are fixed. So, once you do it, you will prefer to leave it alone. And you need a little bit the disadvantage on the space. You will need more extra space for piping and so on. For example, you will need to place this pipe or hose anywhere in the pipe. Mm -hmm. Let's do this exercise in another video.